G'day Matt here from Walkira again. Just about to show you a, uh, a short clip uh, of a video that we just done five minutes ago, just of a quick flight. Uh, the flight characteristics of the Voyager seem pretty good. Uh, pretty impressed with its power um, and its speed. Um, its stability is good once you do have GPS lock. Um, we sell these things and I should be encouraging you to buy one however I've got to state the facts and uh, out of the box I'm not entirely happy with a couple of things one of those is that um, the GPS can be really good and then can be really bad so at times we were getting 10 flashes on the uh, blue light at the rear and then all of a sudden uh, during GPS hold uh, it would let go and we noticed we lost our flashes so um, I believe some people have seen this on the Scout too, so feel free to comment on this and uh, and let us know what you guys have found as well. Um, but that does bother me a little bit because especially with the little 350s and the X800 that we fly all the time, um, it never gets to the stage where we lose GPS signal completely and it starts to drift once it's been put into hold. Um, so that's uh, one of my biggest uh, issues at the moment. Uh, the other issue is we're still uh, fighting with the functionality of the camera and uh, trying to work that out because the activation switch doesn't seem to do much. However, the local switch on the camera appears to activate it uh, and close out the recording as well. Uh, I'm not 100% impressed with what I've seen out of the camera um, at this point. Uh, bear in mind this is one of the very first pre-production models, so hopefully something will get upgraded. Um, but yeah, as it sits at the moment, I definitely wouldn't be using the uh, the camera for any commercial work, and uh, probably it's even borderline on whether it's any good as a hobby. So yeah, a bit disappointed in the camera. Uh, the gimbal, when it works, is fine. We noticed that when we were doing a fair bit of hard flying beforehand, uh, that it actually seemed to get caught up and got stuck in a spot and was jittering away, and uh, we couldn't really knock it out. Um, until we come back and reset the aircraft so yeah not not 100% sold on the gimbal or the camera um, the nice little lights on the back on this back black panel here um, they're, they're really beautiful to look at but it seems like they're really not worth worth the uh, the display they're written on because they all seem to power up at about the same time it's like those lights are on a timer and even with the GPS lock light on um, it's quite clear from the blue light at the back that you can possibly get no GPS even with the the little blue uh, even with the GPS indicator on the screen so yeah look there's still a bit of uh, still a bit of working out to do yet and um, as I said, in manual mode, uh, the aircraft's quite a nice machine, very quick, very powerful. But um, yeah, is it the perfect aircraft? Oh, I'm not, I'm not sold on that just yet. So we'll uh, we'll show you this short clip of us doing a flight. You can see the stability of it, and uh, you can even see during the flight that how we had a couple, two or three lights of GPS. And then uh, when we turn around at one stage there, there's no blue flashing lights again, so it loses the uh, lights sort of in flight. Uh, we've tried waiting three or four minutes, still doesn't make any difference. It can come and go. As I said, we can have ten flashes, and then the next minute we can have none. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep investigating and see what we can do, but it's uh, our job to test it, not to fix it. So um, this is just for information and letting everyone aware just in case you want to go out and spend 3000 Australian dollars on something that you think may be perfect when unfortunately at the moment I, uh, I couldn't guarantee that. So we'll show you this clip now. Thank you. G'day, Matt here again from Walkira, Australia. we now got the uh, Voyager outside. I'm going to do a quick flight test on it. Um, we think we've got the camera recording at the moment, although the instructions are fairly sparse, so we will uh, give it a go. There's multi red flashing lights that happen on the camera, so we'll try and work out the, uh, the remote activation properly and, and go from there. Uh, I've got a couple of GPS lights there at the moment. We did notice that, um, that beforehand we were getting up to sort of 10 lights, so we'll see if that increases at all. 
but we'll get it up in the air anyway and we'll, uh, we'll keep a lookout for the uh, GPS signalling crossing. Okay, so I just got that in manual mode at the moment, so um, it's hovering not too bad. We don't have much of a breeze here at the moment today, so um, it's pretty responsive on the throttle, as you'd appreciate from that uh, that battery. I'll just give you a quick quick buzz on the throttle, and you can see uh, how quick that climbs up. So that's only that was only probably the half throttle, just over half. So very responsive on the throttle. It's got plenty of power behind it. Um, so yeah, it looks good as far as that goes. So we'll just bring it back around. I'll put it into uh, GPS hold once um, once I get some uh, more GPS signal. I'll give you a look at the front of the machine as well. Just come in a little bit. So uh, I mentioned on the forum that um, a fair bit of vibration now. Sometimes that, that, that seems to come and go a little bit. I'm not too sure if that depends on the weather or not. Uh, we, we did have some wind here when we did do the initial testing. Um, but yeah, pretty good at the moment, but we'll um, put it into GPS hold. And now uh, that's currently in GPS hold now, so we'll bring it back down. And as you can see, at the moment where it sits with the undercarriage still down, um, fairly fairly good. It doesn't appear to be too many vibrations. What I'll do now is I'll put the undercarriage up and bring the camera down. And uh, now what I can see, and it's pretty hard to see on the video, but we're definitely getting slight resonance and vibrations through the right hand uh, and left hand front motors so there's a fair bit of vibration there which you probably won't pick up on the camera. Now whether that's transferred through to the camera or not we will see. We do have it, well we believe we've got it on recording so um, we'll give it a go and uh, watch the recording after this and see see if the video from that uh, 4K camera is, uh, is showing those vibrations. Definitely plenty of power there. Sounds good, sounds like it's not struggling whatsoever. So we'll put the undercarriage down and we'll come back in. And uh, we can only just hope that um, that's, uh, we can only hope that uh, our recording has come through on that camera. But as I said, uh, there's no recording indication uh, on our screen on the F12, and uh, we've got random flashing red lights and sometimes solid lights on the camera. Uh, we haven't quite worked that one out yet. So we'll uh, we'll work that out and we'll get back to you. Thank you.